Kia ora, year 12 and 13. Um, in case you're not sick of trigonometry, here is some scholarship calculus trig to have a look at. Uh, we'll be going over these two in our scholarship session on Wednesday. Um, the first question is really a warm-up that I think probably fits better than three, but we'll do it anyway. Make use of trig identities to find the exact value of cos 7 pi on 12. So we know that we're going to be wanting to use probably our compound angle formula here. Remember, cos of A plus B is equal to cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. Now, if we're looking for exact values, we need to be breaking things down into our favourite two triangles. These two here. So we know we've got to somehow break up that 7 pi on 12 into some multiple of angles in those. And this one's pretty easy really. Um, if we break up 7 pi on 12 into 3 pi on 12 plus 4 pi on 12, that should work out. Right, so cos of 7 pi on 12 works out to be cos of pi on 4, cos pi on 3, minus sine pi on 4, sine pi on 3. And we get 1 on root 2 times 1 half, minus 1 on root 2 again, times root 3 on 2. I'll simplify that on the next slide. Okay, so we've got 1 on root 2 times 1 half minus root 3 on 2, which we can simplify as 1 minus root 3 on 2. Now, at this stage, most of you are probably comfortable getting it to that point, but there's one more little step I want to show you. We'll use this a lot in complex numbers. It's not considered elegant to leave the square root in the denominator. So we want to do something called rationalising the denominator, and we can do that, in other words, making it into a rational number instead of an irrational. Right? Remember this is an irrational number, because it can't be expressed as a fraction. I'm not going to get sidetracked onto that now. So if we multiply top and bottom by root 2, what we get here is, on the denominator, 2 times root 2 times root 2 is just 4. And on in the numerator we have root 2 minus root 6. So that's probably the, the, the nicest way to write that solution. Alright, now we're going to get into the harder of the two questions on the next slide. Right, we're given two half angle formulae for trig. Cos of half of alpha is equal to this thing here. And sine of half of alpha is equal to this thing here. Then we're told, given that tan of theta is 20 root 6, and theta is between 0 and pi on 2, or 90 degrees, find an exact value for tan of theta on 4, and simplify your answer. Okay, so this question is um, completely doable with, with what you know, and I want you to pause the video now and try it on your own first. I'm going to give you two hints, so pause the video now if you don't want to hear the two hints. Okay, so hint one is what is tan theta? Well, tan theta is just sine theta over cos theta. And hint two is... Pythagoras. So those two things are what I used to solve the problem completely. So I pause it now and have a go. Okay, so let's start by looking at the definition that we've got. Well, we're not going to go straight to tan of theta on 4, but we might play with the two formula we've been given. So we've been given sine of alpha on 2 and cosine of alpha on 2. So tan of theta on 2 will just be 
sine, oops, sine of theta on 2 over cos of theta on 2. So a little bit of algebra. We've got that. 1 minus cos theta on 2 divided by 1 plus cos theta on 2, which is not so bad. Um, we're going to have 1 minus cos theta on 2 times the reciprocal. So times 2 over 1 plus, plus cos theta. So all I'm doing is what we've done since about year 6 with dividing fractions. Okay, so that's going to simplify. We'll do that on the next slide. You might want to pause it here and see how far you can get. So we've got to tan of theta on 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cos theta. We'll put everything inside a square root. Right, so that's just equal to the square root of 1 minus cos theta on 1 plus cos theta. Right, so let's stop there and... Now let's try and have a think about the problem we started with. Well, we were given tan of theta and told that that was 20 root 6. And our goal is to get to tan of theta on 4. Now it seems like we're making some progress. We've found a way to get tan of half the angle and then we could maybe apply it twice over to get to tan of quarter of the angle. The only problem we've got is that We've managed to express this in terms of cosine. So we need to find a link between the tan and the cosine. There are two ways to do this. Um, one way that I've seen in the answer schedule uses um, the identity for between sec squared and tan squared. I didn't do it that way. I did it what I think is a, an easier way. And that's using Pythagoras. So I'm going to draw out what our triangle needs to look like for this to be true on the next slide. Okay, so tan of theta is a really, really big number. It's 20 root 6. So thinking about what that means, if we think about our trig graphs, it means that theta is a number that's getting pretty close to 90 degrees because at 90 degrees, or pi on 2, we've got our asymptote where tan is undefined. So we can draw a right-angled triangle just like we did in year 10 when we learned about Pythagoras. We know that tan of theta is opposite over the adjacent, or well, hopefully you're thinking in terms of the unit circle a bit more by now, and it's equal to y over x. Right? But what we've got here is we've got our theta here, the opposite side is 20 root 6, and the adjacent side is 1. Now we looked at this in class in the scholarship session last week, that we can use Pythagoras to figure out this side length here. So we're going to do that now, and we're going to get a really lovely round number for our answer. So here's my triangle again. We've got 1, 20 root 6 here, and we'll call this C. All right, so we've got 1 squared plus 20 root 6 squared equals C squared. So that works out to be 1 plus 2,400 equals c squared, so 2,401 is equal to c squared. And you probably don't recognise that, but if you have a quick look, you'll find out, actually if you get your calculator, you'll find out that c is equal to 49. So that's a very nice number to be working with, because that tells me that cos of theta, remember theta's down here, is equal to a over h, which is 1 over 49. So now we can go in and go back into our tan of theta on 2 formula and keep going. So again, pause the video, make sure you've followed up to this point, and then try the next bit on your own. So we've got tan of theta on 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cos theta over 1 plus cos theta which works out to be 1 minus 1 49th 
over 1 plus 1 49th, or 48 on 49 divided by 50 over 49, which is 48 over 50, or 24 square root of 24 over 25. Right, and which looks far nicer if we take out our perfect squares and we write that as 2 root 6 on 5. So we're starting to head somewhere quite good because we've got tan of theta on 2. Now let's go back for a minute and figure out how we're going to get to the answer which is tan of theta on 4. Well we know tan of theta on 2 is equal to this. And so tan of theta on 4 can be found using the same thing as 1 minus cos of theta on 2 over 1 plus cos of theta on 2. Now, do we know cos of theta on 2? Well, we do because we've been given a formula for it. So cos of theta on 2 comes right from the start of our question. It's equal to the square root of 1 plus cos of theta on 2, which is equal to 1 plus 1 49th divided by 2. Right, I'm going to squish this onto the slide. Thanks for your patience with the mess. So that works out to be 50 over 49 divided by 2, which is the square root of 25 over 49, which is a beautiful rational number, 5 sevenths. There we are, so feeling pretty good now. That's the cos of theta on 2. Now, last step is to substitute that back in to this thing here. Okay, so we found cos of theta on 2, and now we're just substituting. One very last slide, and then we're done. So tan of theta on 4 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cos of theta on 2 over 1 plus cos of theta on 2, which is equal to the square root of 1 minus 5 sevenths over 1 plus 5 sevenths. And that equals the square root of 2 sevenths divided by 12 sevenths which equals the square root of 1 sixth, or 1 divided by root 6. Okay, that's all for today. I um, hope that made sense, and as I said, we'll look at that in class, and we'll also look at the other way that you can do this. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your break.